Okay, I'm going to work through an example from page 25 of the book DOE Simplified. Um, and this example will be used to calculate an ANOVA analysis of variance. All right, and so in this example, we're looking at four different dice, and they've each been rolled 14 times, and we want it to determine uh, if there's any significant, statistically significant difference between the dice. So let's say we're playing a game where it's important to roll a high numbers. We want to know which is the best die, die to choose to get uh, the highest numbers. Okay, so the first idea you might have in calculating these is to try to compute an average for the four dice and see which one has the highest average. Okay, so to do that, I uh, go and click on the cell um, below the column of numbers I want to average, and I'm going to press the equal symbol, and the equal symbol puts Excel into a mode where you can enter a formula. The second thing I'm going to do is to type in the word average, and you'll see that Excel reminds you that average is one of their functions used to calculate an average. Um, I then enter an opening parentheses, and then I'm going to highlight the data I want to average, and click on a closing parentheses, and then I'm going to hit the key enter. Okay, and that puts the formula for computing the average into this cell. It's based on uh, those numbers. I can click. If I click there, I can click the check mark, and it will return that to its original formula. Or I can put the formula I typed in there into that cell. Um, now, if I click on the cell, you can see there's a little black square in the lower right-hand corner. And if I hover over that, my cursor changes. So I'm going to take that corner and drag it over and that's going to put the average in these other four cells. Okay. Now I can see, looking at these averages, that it looks like this one is, uh, well, these two are both tied for being the best. Okay. These two are both look like they're good. Um, these other two, so the blue and the green die, appear to be the best ones. But that it may not be the case. It may, since this is a very small sample set, um, I also have to consider the variation between the data points. I need to analyze the variance because it could be that they just happen to be a little higher than the others. Maybe they aren't significantly better. So the next thing is to compute the variance. So I hit equals again, and I hit V, and it looks like there's a variance formula VAR, and so I'm going to use that one highlight the uh, values, um, close the, or open the parentheses, highlight the values, close the parentheses, and hit enter. Now I've entered my variance formula into the Excel sheet, and I can copy that over to the other values. So those are my variances. <coughs> um, the next thing we need to do to calculate uh, uh, and so now I have the variances. Well, they look like they're pretty large compared to those averages, so um, I'm not quite sure uh, what to do next. So the next thing I'm going to do is to um, go over and I've actually copied these into my drawing program and I'm going to draw some formulas. So the way you really do an ANOVA is you want to do something uh, called an F test. And so we're going to look at an F test and we're going to calculate the F statistic and uh, F is equal to um, some value a ratio between Uh, n times this value s sub y bar, which is, we're going to find out that's going to be the standard deviation of the averages, or the variance of the averages, sorry, so that's s uh, squared. y bar. Uh, 
um, divide times n, where n is the um, number of samples, in this case 14, and then it's divided by uh, this other number, s squared pooled, and um, that is going to be the average of the variances. So that's going to be the average of these four variances. This, uh, this number is going to be the variance of these four averages. Okay, so if I look at each of these individually, um, n in this case is 14, um, s y bar squared is going to be computed by taking the sum of um, each of the individual means. So each of these is me, uh, each of the individual means and subtracting uh, the average of all of those means. So I'm going to write it this way. Your book uh, may use a different notation. Um, so I'm going to take the difference between, um, I think I'm going to write it this way, the average of, e of all the means minus each individual mean. And I'm going to write those as uh, mu sub i. And dividing by um, n minus 1, and I wrote this as a capital N, where this capital N is the um, number of, it, of different treatments. Or the number of different uh, experimental conditions you ran. So in this case it's each different die. So there's four die, and so in this case um, n will be, uh, in this case n is 4, but up here in our formula n minus 1 is going to be 3. Uh, again, this n was the, um, the number of samples. It's important to keep track of all these different n's because we're going to have a couple extra ones coming in later on. So that's your uh, this will be, so this is the standard deviation of the averages or um, and then the next thing we need to do is something called uh, this s squared pooled which is really the average of the standard deviations. So that's going to be, um, I could write it like this I think. So it's going to be the sum of the variances each of the individual s uh, variances and then divide by um, n which is again the number of treatments in this case. Okay, I got a little crooked, maybe I'll straighten that out. Okay, so